our young people. It's so good to see all of you here today. I am Tracy Blackwood. I'm Minister Counselor for Diaspora and Consular Affairs. And Mrs. Siva and myself will be um, chairing this program today. So welcome. Um, I will now ask you to stand for the national anthem. gentlemen. I'm going to ask Reverend Marcia da Costa of the Praise Christian Center Kilburn to offer the opening prayer. I recognize that there are people here of faith or no faith or Christian faith and I'm going to be praying according to the Christian faith, okay? I've been asked to pray. So if we take uh, um, bow our heads as I pray. Can you all hear me at the back? Yes? Okay. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ at this launch of the Jamaica Diaspora Conference. Jamaica Diaspora Building Pathways for su Sustainable Development. We thank you for this opportunity to build relationships with the diaspora for the greater good of our nation, Jamaica. We thank you for the success of the conference. We thank you for that you brought all these people here tonight safely. But Lord, that you will also cause our hearts, stir our hearts, that we will take this opportunity to become involved, in, particularly in the biennial staging uh, of the 8th, diaspora conference. Lord, that we will work together to achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals of 2030, which incorporates the vision, Jamaica's vision, for 2030. So we just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity as this, uh, this conference is launched in, in the UK to the diaspora here. 
We thank you for your presence. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you, Lord, for the youth, the youth forum, for the descendants of the Jamaican community, Lord, that they too will become partakers in building the land we love. May your grace and your truth and your love be upon this meeting and a great successful conference later on this year. In Jesus' name, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the eighth Biennial Jamaica Diaspora Conference launch. Our, our High Commissioner, His Excellency Seth George Ramakan, will come up to do the welcome and opening remarks. Good evening, everyone. Okay, I um, just want to do some salutations here. Uh, Reverend Marcia de Costa, uh, Praise Christian Center, and representatives of our legacy partners, that is Mr. Robert Walker, uh, Manager Grace Kennedy uh, Limited, um, Ms. Paulette Simpson, Executive Corporate Affairs, uh, and, of course, public policy for the JN Group. Um, Ms. Jane Carpens Lee, manager of Tottenham Branch Victoria Mutual Building Society, and uh, Dr. Carlton Brown, uh, Inspire Consultancy, uh, founder and CEO for, of Marshall and Brown. Uh, Mr. Kevin Brown, chair, Jamaica Diaspora uh, UK, and Mr. Fitzroy Grant, Diaspora Advisory Board Member, and uh, Professor Cecile Wright, who also is a Diaspora Advisory Board Member. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the community, uh, leaders within the community, ladies and gentlemen, good evening to you all. It is my pleasure to welcome you here to this, the launch of the 8th Biennial Diaspora Conference, which is to be held in Kingston, Jamaica uh, from uh, June uh, uh, 16 to 20, which is not far away, and of course, is under the theme, Jamaica and the Diaspora, Building Pathways for Sustainable Development. May I, first of all, address thanks to Mr. Mark Richards, uh, through whose uh, instrumentality we uh, were able to have the uh, use of this uh, lecture theater. And um, for those of you who feel that you're back in university, that's okay. Uh, I don't pretend to be a good lecturer. <laughs> but thank you most kindly for, um, you know, to the hardworking members of the Jamaica High Commission who are here, or Deputy High Commissioner is here, and uh, a number of the members, if not all, are here in this room today. They have done an extraordinary job in uh, putting together uh, this uh, launch, which really is a local um, launch uh, in, in a lead up to what is about to happen in Jamaica. And of course, I am not known to be a best person, but I must say, the Jamaican UK community is by far the most loyal, patriotic uh, people that I know, that I have met. And I want to thank you all, despite rain or whatever issue there are, that you have made it uh, to be here. And I ask you, please, put your hands together for the person beside you. <laughs> you know, the upcoming uh, annual, uh, biannual uh, conference is really a shining example of a partnership. How 
the various partners and stakeholders in Jamaica work together in order to bring together uh, the people uh, within Jamaica and the diaspora for this co collaboration. And the conference really is expected to examine uh, the developmental objectives which are based on the United Nations uh, Sustainable Goals. And these goals are reflected in the Jamaican National Development uh, Plan, which is called Vision 2030 Jamaica. And its theme is making Jamaica by 2030 a place to live, to work, to raise families, and to do business. And there are four main goals of this vision. They are, Jamaicans are empowered to achieve their fullest potential. We speak as though it has already happened. So that's why it is written like this. We do not say Jamaicans will achieve. We make it in the present tense because indeed it's something that we are extraordinarily committed to having done. The Jamaican society is secure, cohesive, and just. Jamaica's economy is prosperous, and Jamaica has a healthy and, uh, of course, um, a safe environment. Our Deputy High Commissioner will, uh, later on, um, be speaking and giving you some very uh, clear information pertaining to the conference in Jamaica, what to expect. But most of you would have received um, a, already, you know, a sort of a, a copy of a, what is known as the National Diaspora Policy, because this is one of the main objectives of the conference to be able to look this uh, document through in its very final stages before it, uh, it receives cabinet approval. But the copies that were sent to you were sent to you because we know that you have opinions and uh, your scrutiny of that document will help to sharpen it, to strengthen it, to make sure that all the points that are you think should be in it are considered and therefore that we can have that document finalized i therefore wish to encourage you to really review the document and at the earliest possible date and you know that has to be very early because the conference is in june uh, so at the very earliest possible date in fact within the shortest number of days that you can get them to us, we certainly would appreciate that. Now, diaspora engagement is an intrinsic element of Jamaica's uh, foreign and domestic policy. And we recognize the important role that you play. And of course, this is in shaping the uh, sustainable development of Jamaica. And so the participation, your participation, is not only at the, the level of the many things that you do, um, you know, by way of organizations, uh, by way of visits to Jamaica and doing things in Jamaica, but also is in the area of policy development, that this is part of what Jamaica intends for uh, the diaspora to be very much uh, involved in. The Jamaican Diaspora UK um, is estimated to be somewhere about 800,000. It is one of the largest diaspora locations, um, the United States being the largest, and uh, uh, the United Kingdom the second, and of course Canada is the, the third largest of them. And uh, so we really would like to know that here in uh, the United Kingdom, you are playing your part in developing, yes, the country of, in which you reside, 
but even while you reside here, that you are involved in developing the country of your birth or your heritage, whichever uh, one fits your particular uh, situation. And at the conference, we hope to explore uh, potential areas of investment and to build sustainable partnerships between uh, Jamaica and the diaspora towards, uh, of course, a shared uh, tangible outcomes. So this conference is a very important forum for just about everyone who has an interest in uh, the future of Jamaica, uh, particularly persons who probably are thinking about investing in Jamaica or returning to Jamaica, various other engagements with Jamaica, you should definitely uh, become very much involved in this. Of course, your partnership is already proving to be of great benefit to Jamaica, and uh, this is through your many philanthropic uh, <coughs> services, the way in which you have been uh, working through various organizations. Many of them are health-based, education-based, uh, socially-based organizations that are seeking to find ways to participate and to help Jamaica to achieve its own goals. And as we come to this conference, this launch, it is important for all of us to be aware that the partnership between Jamaica and its diaspora is bearing significant fruit, enormous results for the benefit of Jamaicans at home and Jamaicans in the diaspora. It's very important for the members of the diaspora to understand that in contributing to Jamaica, that we are actually also contributing to our own well-being because Jamaica sees the residents of Jamaicans across the globe as part of the one Jamaica. In fact, although we are geographically located in the Caribbean, we see ourselves as a nation of people that are globally um, you know, represented. And so for this reason, I want to just remind us that this partnership that we have built is really making uh, great strides. For example, it is through this partnership it has enabled the government of Jamaica to lower Jamaica's unemployment rate to an all-time low of 8% with significant gains among women and the youth. And this is very encouraging because we would like for you to see the policy developments in Jamaica and the gains Jamaica is making is not only in the particular area that you are doing your work and making your contribution, but it applies to the whole. It helps all of Jamaica to succeed. And for this reason, uh, it is very encouraging because many members of the diaspora who return to Jamaica are better able to find meaningful jobs and employment opportunities much easier than before because of the low un unemployment rate and the growth of jobs that is taking place in Jamaica. And therefore, you are making a lot of preparations for uh, situations such as if you want to invest in Jamaica or if you want to return to Jamaica. Since our last diaspora conference in 2017, the government of Jamaica has increased non-taxable wages from $500,000 Jamaican per year to 1.5 million Jamaican dollars uh, per year. And what this really means is that the purchase power, the purchasing power of a significant number of uh, workers in Jamaica has suddenly gone up because you know, your, your wages are not taxed up to the level of 1.5 million per year. And strategically, what this is doing 
is, is bringing the majority of Jamaicans closer to what you would call the middle class. Because this is really what a developed country is, is noted for. It is noted for having the larger portion of its population being middle class. You do have the rich, you have the poor, they, you know, that happens on, on both ends, but those are the minority class. The majority ought to be people who fall in that middle class. In the recent uh, 2019 to 2020 budget presentation in Jamaica, the government of Jamaica gave up $14 billion in taxes. Normally, the tradition is that the government would raise taxes to earn an extra $14 billion. But the reverse is what has happened. By giving up $14 billion uh, dollars in taxes, why? In order to stimulate greater business and economic activity to, to boost growth. And these are the kinds of policies which are not the usual kind of policies that uh, we have been accustomed to making as a nation that are now happening in Jamaica. And therefore, this is good for our diaspora because what it does is it makes doing business in Jamaica easier and more profitable. And for that reason, the, we, I wanted to see the relationship between these policies and the diaspora. They are very much with the diaspora in mind. Our partnership with the diaspora uh, has helped to boost the government's policy of macroeconomic stability, which, of course, includes a relatively low inflation rate and also the lowering of interest rates. And this has resulted in 16 consecutive quarters of positive economic growth in Jamaica. The longest period of sustained growth consecutive growth in the country's history, as well as one in which it is uh, um, helping individuals now, the, the wealth of the country to grow so that more can be done for, for the nation. And these are, are also encouraging because as many persons from the diaspora look forward to returning to Jamaica, the, the, it is a way of preparing, preparing Jamaica for the arrival of these persons. Of course, I think you'd be very happy to hear this, that public debt has fallen from 140% of GDP down to 95%. What does that mean? When it was 140% of GDP, it meant that our debt was larger than our total income as a country. That has turned around. It has been cut down by 45% debt paid off. And now we are at 95%, so our economy now is somewhat larger than our debt, but the aim is to bring that down to 60%. And it is happening. It's gradually happening. And what this means is that Jamaica, when it is, its debt is much lower than its, 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 its um, income, its GDP, it means that is really true, genuine growth. And you know what? Just for those who would like to know, our debt to the Chinese is only 4% of our total national debt. Because there, there is a view out there that you know, the Chinese are taking over. Only 4% of Jamaica's debt is owed to the Chinese. So, ladies and gentlemen, Jamaica is not perfect. But we are amazingly proud of our ongoing achievements. And this is, therefore, a good point at which individuals who are looking at uh, doing business with Jamaica, um, returning to Jamaica, things of that nature, this is a good point at which to begin to um, make those, those plans. The Jamaica uh, Diaspora Conference will provide you with an opportunity 
to ask questions pertaining to matters like these, to meet people. You'll be meeting uh, government officials, business leaders, civic leaders, people from all walks of society. So you will be able, you'll be meeting many critical agencies uh, of government, and in this way, you'll have an opportunity to gain more. There are many displays, um, what do you call uh, the, these uh, display counters that are booths that are provided. So you can go to the booth of your interest, you can get a lot of information. This is hands-on. And that is why this pre-launch, or this local launch, is designed in order to make you understand why it is important for you to make it your business to go to the Jamaica Diaspora Conference. And if by chance you happen to have already planned to be in Jamaica about that time, then please make it your business to get registered for the conference so that uh, you can be there. Of course, there's a lot that is happening in Jamaica, and you'll hear about this more uh, through the evening, but also when you get into Jamaica, about the large expansion in roads, uh, all of the roadways that are, you know, the developments that are taking place. Um, you'll also hear a lot about the many safety measures, because we do have a problem, and we are fighting it, a monster that is called crime. And all of the effort is being made just this year alone. The government has added, in other words, to the many uh, billions of dollars that were already added, $700 billion in order to make Jamaica safe and to get crime to be something behind us. And part of this is really the securing of Jamaica's borders through modern technological uh, means. And for that reason, we are very optimistic about being the winners in the end against this monster. So these and other issues will be discussed at the conference. You'll have all the opportunity to do that. Finally, let me once again recognize and thank our legacy partners who have been with us from the beginning. Uh, Grace Kennedy, Jamaica National, Victoria Mutual, Jerry and Nevi. They have really been stood by and I would like for you to put your hands together for them, please. <laughs> The chairing of the conference has been rotated over the years, and this year it is chaired by, the, by Grace Kennedy, the uh, CEO of uh, Grace Kennedy. I want to therefore encourage you to register for the conference. You can do that online by uh, going to the conference website by contacting the Jamaica High Commission, but much easier, there's a counter right here in this building, right at the entrance when you were coming in. You'll see conference registration desk. You can just go there and get yourself registered. That makes it easier. So we have kind of cut the difficulty out of it and made it possible for you to do that. But I want to thank you again for being here, and I am personally looking forward to seeing you in Jamaica. Thank you very much. Thank you, High Commissioner. And as High Commissioner had specially thanked the legacy partners, and now we'll hear from them. First of all, from Mr. Robert Walker, Commercial Manager of Grace Kennedy Limited. Let's have a round of applause, please. Thank you. High Commissioner Seth Ramakan, um, Reverend Marcia Da Costa, our MC Tracy Blackwood, Vivian Siv, and Vivian Siva, other members of the Legacy Partnership Group, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon or good evening. 
If you permit me, please, I would probably want to share with you two experiences I've had in the last month. Because I've spent the last month in Jamaica. And I, so if I say to you what is one extreme, which was a challenge of packing to leave Jamaica on Monday to return here. Love the United Kingdom, don't get me wrong. But it was difficult packing to leave Jamaica earlier this week. Before I left Jamaica, I represented Grace Kennedy on a committee called Kingston Restoration Company. We were trying to develop um, Kingston, um, certainly downtown Kingston, as a new place where people would be proud to visit on a regular basis. The pressure I had over the last month was to see downtown Kingston become a place where at 6 o'clock in the morning, 6.30, people drive to work, park, put on their jogging suit, and are jogging along Port Royal Street, Harbour Street, along the pier. And when you get back in the evening at 6 o'clock, you have to avoid Ocean Boulevard because the place is congested. The downtown Kingston is crowded until about 11, 12 o'clock at night. There are five restaurants that are open on the pier and it is alive and bustling. I, have I can't believe that in my lifetime, I am seeing now where you have to be on a waiting list to get a room in Trenchtown to spend a weekend. Because Airbnb are pushing people into Trenchtown at Bob Marley's house. And it is a waiting list. And those are people from overseas operating in, tr in Trenchtown um, without any problem. As our High Commissioner pointed out earlier, we're not going to say we don't have issues. But I think the government is doing as much as they can to, you know, address the many issues that are there. And we are seeing progress over time. But today, I'm here representing Grace Kennedy. And I want to say how pleased we are to be part of today's launch. Um, the UK launch of the Jamaica Diaspora Conference that will be held later this year in June in the wonderful country of Jamaica. Grace Kennedy is extremely proud of, our, of being a legacy partner in this program. And this year we are especially proud because our, chair, our CEO is a chairman of the 8th Biennial Conference. So we have a special pride in this year's program. There's a saying, what is good for Jamaica is good for each and every one of us. And so, whether we are Jamaicans living at home or we form part of that three million who represent the diaspora across the world, it is our responsibility to ensure that our great nation that sits on that little rock in the Caribbean continues to be great and even become greater. And so we are excited to support the theme, Jamaica on the diaspora, Building Pathways to Sustainable Development. As a company, we're always appreciative of the diaspora. It is because of you, it is because of your desire for Jamaican cuisine that we are able to expand ourselves internationally, providing our quality products to satisfy your desire for Jamaican products. And so, Working with the UK diaspora and the Jamaica High Commission, and if I may agree with you, sir, that based on what I have seen across the different markets, the UK diaspora is certainly the most active um, across. So we have a tremendous pleasure working with the Commission and the diaspora over the years through the many social and charity programs that benefit Jamaicans back home. Our partnership and support to charity programs have been fairly wide, and if I may be allowed, I could mention a few. There's the Angel Foundation that takes care of schools, 
And I see Angel here having had the, prov the program on the weekend. The Noel's Home program that takes care of hospitals in the western area of Jamaica. And we spend a lot of time supporting that group as well. The Jamaica Basic School Foundation. But there are two that I may want to spend a little time touching on. And it goes there to my heart because there's a focus on and, and let me not get into trouble with this, but we are using it to embrace the next generation, which is a younger group of folks. One is our partnership with Reach Society. We have found that here in the UK, and the studies are there to back it, that young black males are challenged, and they are not fully represented in universities. So we have taken it on ourselves to provide scholarship for a young black male of Caribbean heritage to attend the Brunel University. And we are now in our second year of sponsorship. The second one I want to mention, again, a little focus on the next generation, because they are our future. We have to take care of them as well, is what we have as the Jamaica Birthright Program. Every year, we take a set of young folks, and we encourage you just around before the summer to make contact with the High Commission because they're our official partners in selecting members for this program. Where across the world, the US, Canada, USA, we put a focus on second and third generation um, Jamaicans and offer them a fully paid trip back home to have a cultural experience and to have a, a internship at our office and live with one of our staff members. So they have a full appreciation of their home country, Jamaica. And that we feel very proud of. We have six factories in Jamaica. One here in the UK. But there's a special relationship I want to spend just a few moments on. And that is a factory we have in Hunslow in St. Elizabeth. That factory sits in southern St. Elizabeth and provides technical support to the farmers in that community for them to grow callaloo and pepper. So when you're eating the Grace Duns um, callaloo, or the Duns River Kalalo, or the many pepper sauces that we provide, it is coming directly from Hunslow in St. Elizabeth. What that does is allow us to, to train farmers in that area how to use proper irrigation, how to get the best yield from their area, how to manage themselves financially. And when the mothers and fathers are, ex are, are employed, what that guarantees is that the kids will get to go to school on a more regular basis. So we thank you for every callaloo and every pepper sauce that you pick up for us. Some of that pepper we ship here to the UK to our factory and produce sauces that we send as far away as Russia. And so it gives me pride when I drive in St. Elizabeth to see a little farmer and say, if only you know that pepper is reaching Russia. Maybe Vladimir Putin is having, you know, one of your, your, your things. So, ladies and gentlemen, our CEO, Don Webby, when they did the official launch of the program in April, highlighted that Daspro invest heavily in Jamaica, in stocks, bonds, and shares in different companies to the tune of 1.2 billion US dollars. The remittance that you send home, whether it is to your parents, to a friend, or for whatever purpose, amounts to 2.2 billion US dollars per year. That represents 16% of the GDP of the country. I am delighted to share this platform today with my fellow legacy partners, they're all here, in supporting you. And as you prepare to go to the conference, let us encourage all to see what we can do to impact the life of Jamaicans 
back home and across the world. As we follow the theme, Jamaica and the diaspora, build path, building pathways for sustainable development. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Walker. I now ask Ms. Paula Simpson, Executive Corporate Affairs and Public P Policy for the Jamaica National Group to come and address us. Ms. Simpson, round of applause, please. I can work slowly. I'm not used to all these contraptions, you know, Mark. Don't worry, don't worry. We'll, we'll I'm sure going. you can all hear me. You're still going to string me up? Go for it. Go. Yeah, and you have to use this one. And I have to use this one. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, Mrs. Blackwood and Mrs. Siva, thank you very much for being our MC. And Mark, thank you so much for hosting us here at Imperial. And I just want you to know that we're extremely proud of all that you you have done, you are doing, and you will continue to do. You, you're very, very, we're very proud of you. So, His Excellency Seth George Ramakan and Mrs. Ramakan, Dr. Ramakan, good to see you. Um, to the Deputy High Commissioner and the staff of the Jamaican High Commission, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, legacy partners, I extend to you a very, very warm greetings, not from London, but all the way from Jamaica. Because if today is anything to go by, we all need the warmth. <laughs> So it's my distinct pleasure to represent Jamaica National Group to speak as a legacy partner as we officially launch the eighth biennial Jamaica conference here in the UK. Since 2004, the leaders of several corporate Jamaican companies, Grace Kennedy, you've just heard, Jerry and Neview, who are not here, so we don't have any room, Victoria Mutual, our colleagues, and the Jamaica National Group have provided vital support to achieve the objectives and aims of the conference and to establish the movement. And we're all very, very proud that we've all been there since inception to ensure that the movement grows from strength to strength. Individually, the legacy partners have brought to the movement their respective companies' experience of working overseas here in the United Kingdom, of, as you've heard, Canada and the United States of America, where a vast number of Jamaicans reside. And High Commissioner, I know the official number in the UK is 800,000, but we all know otherwise. Am I being recorded? We know otherwise. Um, in fact, you know, there are, more, there, there are slightly more Jamaicans living outside of Jamaica now than living inside of Jamaica. If we all went home, I don't know what would happen. But some of us are best serving our country from outside. So through our combined knowledge of doing business in all these countries and the direct, the direct links with Jamaicans across the UK, the USA and Canada, we were able to promote the objective and aims of the Jamaica diaspora movement. Jamaica National have been in the UK. We celebrated 30 years last year. And we just, I want to take this opportunity to thank you very much for your support. Because as you've heard before, because you support us, we can support you. And, and it works like that. The more you support us, the more we can support you. So that relationship with the diaspora is extremely important. And we hope that you'll continue to support all the Jamaican companies here as we seek to build a better Jamaica. Successive Jamaican governments, legacy partners, and leaders that have emerged in the various diasporic communities have worked together with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade to, ex to embrace the aims of the diaspora movement, to work to enhance the movement structure, to strengthen the links between our countries, as well as supporting various initiatives in the diaspora. And you've heard of some of those initiatives here. There are lots of charities across the UK who work in their own way, in their own quiet way sometimes, to build Jamaica and to make a difference. And they've all been extremely successful. And we thank you all, those of you who are involved directly or indirectly. Our migratory trend include persons who are students, who leave to study and they return home, workers who come for short stays, and persons who migrate but remain, maintain their links to their country. As a result, while there's a 
growing brain drain in our country, and we have to admit that, especially for teachers and nurses. Um, there's also economic impact, and, and you heard a bit about that. For example, remittance have increased and continue to increase. Can you imagine if there was a month when no remittances went to Jamaica? I'm not suggesting it, by the way. <laughs> but 16% is very, very heavy. And we've known years when the remittances have exceeded tourism. It's not that now, but remittances are very important. And I know sometimes they don't tell you thanks. So I'm going to stand here and say thanks for every 10 pounds that you've sent to anybody in Jamaica. <laughs> The acquisition of real estate is also very important, and certainly Victoria Mutual and Jamaica National facilitates that in the UK, and it's increasing. But it's not only Jamaicans that are buying real estate in Jamaica. There are Spanish people buying real estate in Jamaica, there are Germans, there are Irish. So the international community have gravitated toward Jamaica, and we urge Jamaicans to be a part of that process and to get a piece of the rock before there isn't any left. <laughs> And also tourism, our, our country continues to benefit from tourism. And remember, you are ambassadors for tourism to your country. So when you go to work, at church, at your neighbors, you all speak positively about Jamaica. They will want to go to Jamaica. And the experience they have in Jamaica will be a good one. So tourism is very, very important. And the diaspora has a key role to play in tourism. In fact, Research shows that somebody from the diaspora community that goes to Jamaica spends more money than somebody who goes to an all-inclusive. And most importantly, that money remains in the economy and generates benefits through ec um, economic activity as you buy and do various things in Jamaica. So it's very, very, very important. So all these patterns have helped to consolidate the diaspora movement and to influence more Jamaicans overseas to contribute to the Jamaican economy through business, charitable acts, and supporting your family. There are many Jamaicans who invest in Jamaica. However, our objective is to increase the participation. So we know that there is investment, but we're encouraging you through whatever means to continue and to increase their investment in Jamaica. Today, the diaspora has, has pursued many initiatives. There are active groups in the USA, in Canada, and the UK, and they've built their own operational bases. And some have grown since the first diaspora conference. And significant contribution has been made, not only to health, but to education and to the agricultural sector. We're seeing more and more persons in diaspora helping their families to be active in agriculture, which of course, Grace will buy to produce the Kalalo, which we then buy. So it all goes around. So ladies and gentlemen, our JNCO, Honorable Earl Jarrett, in 2017 was the diaspora chair. And he has expressed deep appreciation for the opportunity to serve in this movement. And notice I say it's a movement, because a movement gathers pace, a movement is passionate, and a movement is able to tackle any challenges that come because you're passionate about that cause. And right now, that cause is Jamaica. We welcome Senator Don Webby, Chief Executive Officer of Grace Kennedy, who will take on the chairmanship of this year's conference, and we wish him all the best. Under the theme, as you've heard, building pathways for sustainable development. All of us, of, all of us who have served the movement recognize that we have a unique opportunity at this diaspora conference to work together to achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals, as you've heard, and also Vision 2030 for the National Development Plan of Jamaica. And those of you who have not read it and know nothing about it, I urge you to familiarize yourself with it because it is a comprehensive plan. And you know, where, where there's not a plan, you know, things don't work so right. So there is a plan and the government and previous governments have really tried to execute that plan. We also need to consider the global trends and their impact as well as the critical Jamaican diaspora partnerships. And of course, engaging young diaspora to nurture their affinity and involvement. And you spoke about the youth and I will emphasize that. Grace Kennedy has done a lot for young people to engage them. Victoria Mutual has done a lot. Jamaica National, we certainly have done a lot. Um, there are various scholarships at University of Birmingham. We're working with University of Nottingham Trent to get scholarships for persons to be educated. And I'm sure having said that, Mark is going to speak to me about supporting his group. But I would welcome such an approach. 
<laughs> had to say that. <laughs> All right. And I, I, I recall many years ago, we did uh, what we call a summer school program where we got teachers from Jamaica. We got 10 teachers involved in the arts to come to London. And we had a two week seminar with workshop with children, with 99 children across London. And what it did was to immerse them in Jamaican culture and to give them a sense of identity and to let them be proud of their Jamaican culture. Most importantly, to show them how Jamaican culture has influenced the world and it will continue to do so. So when somebody says they're Jamaican or they're Jamaican parentage, it's something to be absolutely proud of because the High Commissioner will tell you there are lots of non-Jamaicans who think they are Jamaican, right? <laughs> and that's okay too. <laughs> so this is our personal invitation to invite Jamaicans to join us in Kingston for what we anticipate will be a very dynamic and exciting conference 2019. And I've been to most of the conferences and they are exciting and you meet people from different places with similar views. In fact, I'll tell you, there was a marriage out of the Jamaican conference because we had, we had, we, we brought 50 young persons to the third conference and one of our young gentlemen who is now an optician in Sheffield met a psychologist from Canada and they got married so we have a diaspora baby and they're now living in the UK so I am not advocating that but it can happen I better end eh <laughs> so it's it's our hope that the conference will really grow from strength to strength and will strengthen the bond between Jamaica and the diaspora. So I thank all of you for being here this evening. I know the weather was very challenging and we look forward to welcoming you in Kingston. And just remember that together we can build a stronger and a better Jamaica. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Simpson. Now we'll ask Mrs. Jane Kirpins Lee manager Tottenham branch Victoria Mutual Building Society to address good evening everybody um, <clears throat> master of ceremonies Mrs. Tracy Blackwood Mrs. Vivian Siva Reverend Marcia De Costa, His Excellency Seth George Ramakan, and Dr. Loma, Lola Ramakan, and fellow legacy partners, fellow Jamaicans, ladies and gentlemen all. I'm here representing Victoria Mutual this evening, and we are pleased to return as a legacy partner for the eighth staging of the Jamaica Diaspora Conference. Over the years, we have taken great pride in our involvement in this important conference, and we look forward to another successful staging this year. We know it is a major logistical exercise to organize the conference, and we congratulate the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade and the entire team of organizers for creating this amazing platform, which brings together Jamaicans who, though separated geographically, and as we know, we're all over the place, we can find Jamaicans everywhere, we share a bond that keeps us united. This conference offers a unique opportunity for us to gather as one people, joined by a common cause, and that is to uplift our beloved Jamaica land we love. Victoria Mutual was founded on a noble goal of helping hardworking Jamaicans own homes and achieve financial independence. We have been purposely working to improve the nation and the lives of its people, of our people, no matter where they are in the world. And we've been doing that for just over 140 years. In fact, Victoria Mutual saw that there was a need to expand and we were the first Jamaican financial institution to establish overseas offices in the diaspora community. And the first one was established right here in the United Kingdom. Today, we have a brand presence in Canada, and we operate offices in Florida and New York, and of course, here in the UK, as stated. Again, I would like to congratulate the organizers of the Jamaica Diaspora Conference being held this year under the theme, Jamaica and the Diaspora, Building Pathways for Sustainable Development. It is a worthwhile endeavor, and one which will continue to reap great rewards for the people of Jamaica. 
And having come to the launch, I'm sure you're all going to register to go. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Carpensley. And now we're going to have Dr. Carlton Brown to give an endorsement on behalf of the diaspora. Dr. Carlton Brown is the director of Aspire Consultancy. He's a lecturer, author, trainer, speaker, coach, and also a successful businessman and philanthropist. He is the founder and CEO of the Marshall and Brown range of fine Jamaican products, which were recently launched in the UK. And in fact, it was launched at the Jamaican High Commission. The establishment of this premium brand is a success story of the Jamaica 55 Diaspora Conference held in 2017. Dr. Carlton Brown. Good evening. Good evening. Dr. Ramikon, uh, High Commissioner, Deputy High Commissioner, and esteemed guest. Two years ago, I, I had a meeting at the High Commissioner with the, with, the, with the High Commissioner. We had a chat about building legacies and business opportunities. And he said, you know, Dr. Brown, he said, you know, it'd be really good for you to go to Jamaica. And I, in fact, I'm going to extend an invitation. I thought, brilliant, I'm going to get a ticket. <laughs> there was no ticket to be had. However, I went to Jamaica and I went to the Diaspora Conference. And just as an opportunity to understand what was really going on in Jamaica. So I just want to share with you what, what my experience was. And my experience was this. I went to the, I went to the conference. I went uh, also to visit Jampro. Um, Jampro, as you, you may well know, is the trade and investment arm of Jamaica. So I looked at the business element of Jamaica. I also looked at understanding what was going on in terms of security, what was going on in terms of business, what was also going on in health, etc. So what I had the opportunity to do though was actually to visit various supply chains and various businesses. So whether you were a cake manufacturer, a sauce manufacturer, or a producer of foods, hotels, etc. So I came away from Jamaica feeling, from the conference feeling really empowered, thinking, we have some great supply chains in Jamaica. We have some world-class businesses in Jamaica in terms of their manufacturing base. Two years later, I came back from Jamaica still thinking about what can I do? What can I do about investing in Jamaica in terms of uh, sustainability? What can I do to invest? And also to pay homage not only to, to Jamaica itself, but also to pay homage to, to my parents. Uh, to my to my mother-in-law and to, to my mother and I decided that we're going to come up with a brand called Marshall and Brown which we'll see on the screen shortly Marshall and Brown as I said was paying homage to both my heritage but also to my to my parents so what did we come up with I said well actually Jamaica's got these very brilliant products we all love food and drink and Grace, as you know, uh, are the founders, you know, over 100 years. Brilliant brand. Uh, and if, you could be, if I could be anything like Grace, it would be wonderful. <laughs> However, so what did I think? I think there was a gap in the, in the UK market. The gap was that there's lots of people who travel. There's 2.2 million visitors to Jamaica every year. They love Jamaican cuisine. Our brand punches beyond its weight. As a, as a country, we, we punch beyond our weight. So I decided that I wanted to launch a brand under three umbrellas. One was the Jerk House brand. The Jerk House brand is a range of six Jamaican sauces, from a jerk, uh, a jerk mustard uh, through a barbecue jerk sauce to Jamaican jerk seasoning. The Mama Brown. Mama Brown is a range of six Jamaican rum cakes. So pineapple flavor, chocolate flavor, um, <laughs> coconut. It, we also do a Mama Brown rum punch. And I know Ray and Nephew are not here, but our rum punch is based on Ray and Nephew and it's 26% by volume. So it's decent, it's strong, it's a, it's a lovely flavor. And we do Marshall and Brown artisan handmade chocolates, which again, the rum truffle is made from Appleton rum. So everything we did was an underpinning of Jamaican providence. Now the cakes 
and the sauces are manufactured and produced in Jamaica. That was a direct result of going to the conference. Now, there's a guy called Dr. Glenn Lehman, who wrote a book called The Jamaican Entrepreneur. And he said there's two types of uh, entrepreneurs. There's the one, an entrepreneur out of necessity, and there's an entrepreneur who sees an opportunity. And I saw the opportunity with the supply chain in Jamaica. I just want to share with you, Mark, where are you, Mark? I just want to show you very, very briefly what the product actually looked like so you can see it. But what I'm saying, the, what the conference did for me was identify opportunities that I wouldn't have ordinarily seen if I was not exposed to it. And what I discovered in Jamaica that the supply chain, so if we just click on to this other one, if you go to the top, go to the top, oh, is that? okay, yeah, and then find the next one, so. up here. just have the cakes. So you can see there, there's a range of, of sources, uh, six ranges of sources. And then we're going to go on to, to look at the rum cakes. They're manufactured in Jamaica. Uh, the cakes are manufactured, well, both the cakes and the sauces are manufactured in Jamaica. Oh, that's a trade secret. <laughs> okay. So. Hopefully you can see that you, we spend a lot of time, I spend a lot of time with our, our marketing department. I spend a lot of time looking at the product and the product styling and development. I wanted to ensure that when we launched a product in the UK, it wasn't just so, so, so. It was something that looked world class as far as I was concerned. That's something that represented Jamaica in the right way. So hopefully if you look at the boxes, you can see the product. The quality of the product is, I would like to think is exceptional. The product is also exceptional. Not only does it look great, it tastes great. And it's a world-class Jamaican product. So my experience from the conference is this. The conference opened up my eyes to opportunities. Opportunities do exist in Jamaica. We have great supply chains. We have factories which are world-class, which are accredited in the UK and internationally, whether they are what they call BRC accredited, they are world-class production. So what I'm saying, the opportunities are there for us, and that opened me to an opportunity. Yes, I'm a management consultant. My day, do, my day job is that I help businesses and to help them grow their business. But I saw this opportunity in, in Jamaica, which I could not ignore. But the conference certainly will open up your eyes to that opportunity. And so for me, thank you for the invitation. I think it was definitely well worthwhile. And for the rest of you, I hope that you like the products or services. And yes, you can go onto Amazon and you can see the stockist of where you can actually get them from. So I hope you, you endorse the product. And as Garvey said, if we, don't help, if we don't help ourselves, no one else will help us. So please, I commend you, Marshall and Brown. Thank you very much. Sorry, sorry, someone had a question. Um, I think you could probably ask him afterwards. Let's just continue with. Okay. I'm so okay, sorry. We'll carry on, but I'll, I'll, yes. You can, it'll be on, it's listed on the website as well. Okay. You can get it on Amazon as well. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Brown. You seem to have excited the audience in terms of, <laughs> you know, producing Jamaican products. And so I want to thank you for speaking and sharing with us. The conference offers a lot of opportunities for networking and for you to get information firsthand. And so, how many of us will be at conference? How many of us have been to conferences in the past? Um, 